With the largest payout network in the Gambia, you can now receive your monies anywhere you are from Kartong to Koina with less hassle. Yes! You can receive monies from your family and friends in UK, Europe, USA, Canada, Switzerland and the rest of the world with our safe, secure, fast and convenient service that offers you the largest selection of payout locations in the Gambia. Supersonics Money Transfer. We are currently in 34 African countries and counting, giving you quality money remittance services that are second to none. Visit the Google Play Store or the Apple Store today to download the Supersonics Money Transfer app and enjoy excellent money transfer services only with Supersonics. Show on Gambian Talents TV, Paul Mandouf presenting it to you. Live here from Seattle, Washington, the time is 12 p.m. midday. I am honored to have a special guest, just like I always tell you guys. Fast and Fast is not a show that... I bring everyone to. It's a show that I feed to special people who are doing extremely well and extraordinary things for the Gambia. And of course, I am honored to bring to you Mr. Dauda Federa, His Excellency, the Gambia's Ambassador to the United States. Mr. Federa, Salaam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. Thank you very much for having me. Glad to have you in Seattle. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> It's a great place. Yes. Yeah. Your first time to Seattle or have you been My very there? first time here. I've heard about Seattle quite a long time, mm -hmm. but I've not had the opportunity to come here. Oh, okay. So this is my very first time here. I'm so glad to be here. Mm, nice. Yeah. Uh, is it that this is your first time to the U.S. altogether or you have uh, not quite to the U.S. but you haven't been to Seattle? I've been, to, I've been around in the U.S., but basically in New York and uh, Washington mm -hmm. for official mission. Okay. But this is first time. Now I'm going around the United States okay. where the Gambian community has concentrated. Yes, that's very good. Well, we are glad to have you. Gambian Talents is glad to also host you for um, this interview uh, so that we can talk to the people about um, uh, the Gambian Embassy, what is happening. But to start with, if you were to tell the world who don't know Dada Fadera, We've been hearing about you. So much noise when President Adam Abaro took over and uh, we've had the ambassador to the U.S. have been chosen, Mr. Fadera, and he's here. People hear about you, but they didn't know you. Uh, possibly this is your first media appearance, right? I, I do have a couple of media appearances yeah. in the Gambia, but okay. in the U.S. this is my first okay. time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so we are glad to be the first people to host uh, Mr. Fadera. Indeed. So if you were yeah. to tell an audience who don't know you, what would you tell them? Who is Dada Fadera? Um, I am uh, a Gambian, an mm -hmm. ordinary Gambian. Mm -hmm. I hail from Kian. Kian. Uh, yeah, Kian Kolum. I am Kian, yes. Uh, Kian Nima. Kian Kolum, Kian Farid. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what we do. Uh, I went to school in Kian. That's where I did my primary school. Okay. And then from there, I proceeded to San Agustin High School. Okay, and nice. I did my secondary education. Recta Safere. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then a uh, few, few years after my uh, advanced level, mm -hmm. I was lucky to go to university mm -hmm. in Prairie College. Mm -hmm. Remember, in those days, so, uh, Gambia has no, had no, no university. Okay. So most of us who couldn't go to America or UK, mm -hmm. Uh, we find our way to Prabhi College. It's a very good university. Okay. Uh, that's where I studied. Mm -hmm. And I studied um, uh, political science okay. and history. Okay. Uh, from there I returned and then I joined the public service. Okay. Even prior to my departure to the university, I worked in public service. Oh, I was okay. also lecturing at the Gambia College. Gambia College. And okay. I also taught in some secondary schools too. Okay. So I was a teacher. Oh, okay. Uh, that is for all of his ex students. <laughs> Here is your former teacher, right? Quite a number, yes. Uh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then finally, I uh, worked for Ministry of Education, okay. uh, the project, pro uh, the project mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. and then uh, joined PMO okay. in mm -hmm. 1995. Oh, okay, wow. And I worked there up to 2016. Okay. So I rose through the rank and became permanent secretary. Oh, at PMO? PMO, yeah. Oh, okay, nice. And then the, when the new government took over, mm -hmm. I was honored. Mm -hmm. to be appointed mm -hmm. as the first Secretary General mm -hmm. to work with the new government. Okay. Up until my appointment as Ambassador, mm -hmm. that was the position I held. Okay. So that's who I am. Oh, so you were Secretary General. For how long did you serve so in the Almost position? one year. Almost, almost one year, one year. okay. Mm -hmm. It has been a very mm -hmm. uh, 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 fruitful one year for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Imagine the new government just come taking over. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a big honor for me mm -hmm. to work with them. Mm -hmm. uh, 
to use my experience in public service mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. what I can at the time to help make sure they settle down properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I do whatever I could mm -hmm. to ensure that uh, we get people back to work. Mm -hmm. Remember, uh, during the First Republic, mm -hmm. quite a number of our public servants have been laid, uh, laid off, mm -hmm. some in most cases illegally, mm -hmm. by the former president. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the major objectives mm -hmm. of this government mm -hmm. is to ensure that uh, they bring people back to work, mm -hmm. bring reconciliation, mm -hmm. and uh, I played my role in that mm -hmm. as effectively as I could. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and also, uh, you know, I'm sure you know about this, uh, during that the last 32 years, mm -hmm. much of the powers were concentrated under the office of the office president. Of the president. Mm -hmm. And the new government, mm -hmm. under the leadership of President Barrow, mm -hmm. they don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. They want to empower mm -hmm. the sector. Mm -hmm. Rather than everything under the office of the president, mm -hmm. he wanted to make sure that uh, uh, the sector mm -hmm. are empowered mm -hmm. and uh, take ownership of their mandate mm -hmm. so that the office of the president can focus on the <coughs> on his, on his co-functions mm -hmm. as it should be. Mm -hmm. So I also was proud to be part of that process mm -hmm. and we did as much as we could mm -hmm. to help that process move forward. Mm -hmm. That is good to hear Mr. Fadera, Your Excellency, um, but you said you started at PMO what year? Uh, 95. 95. Right. So you rose through the ranks. Can you tell us what positions you held I mean, I, over the years? I, I you was, ended up I, being permanent secretary. Absolutely. Prior to that, can you walk us through your ranks that you um, passed through at PMO? I started as a personnel officer. Okay. A uh, position I held for almost three years. Okay. And then got promoted to the senior personnel officer. Okay. Again, held on to that post for nearly three to four years again. Mm -hmm. And then moved to principal level, mm -hmm. principal uh, personnel officer. Mm -hmm. And then deputy peers. Okay. So I served as deputy peers for almost seven years. Mm -hmm. And then finally got promoted mm -hmm. to the permanent secretary. Mm -hmm. uh, until my disappointment. The disappointment, yes. okay. Um, good to hear. Uh, civil servants. We always hear that the permanent secretary is one of the most important positions in the civil service. You are supposed to be the technocrat, the person that knows. Can you briefly tell us what the role of a permanent secretary is? Uh, permanent secretary PMO is a very important function. Mm -hmm. Because PMO, uh, permanent secretary, mm -hmm. is the principal technical advisor mm -hmm. to the secretary general. Okay. So PMO leads the way mm -hmm. when it comes to the public administration. Mm -hmm. Uh, ensuring that the recruitment mm -hmm. of uh, qualified mm -hmm. and deserving Gambians in mm -hmm. the public service mm -hmm. done properly mm -hmm. in accordance with the public service regulations mm -hmm. and other laws of the Gambia. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, PMO also leads the way mm -hmm. working with the public with the, with the public service commission mm -hmm. uh, in terms of promotions mm -hmm. and also capacity building. Mm -hmm. So we work with all the sector mm -hmm. to ensure that they have training plans. Mm -hmm and uh, identify people properly for training that are relevant to their sector. Mm -hmm. And PMO really, you know, that's where the funds were concentrated. Mm -hmm. And they, we utilize that mm -hmm. to ensure that we train the public servants mm -hmm. for the role for the appointed to public service. Yeah, but yeah, your, um, your Excellency, we had the corruption is too much at PMO. To a lot of PMO officers work at the PMO for a year or two. We see them driving nice cars, building big houses. They say there's a lot of corruption at PMO. Uh, of course, uh, people getting rewarded um, uh, based on nepotism, based on connection and the like. Of course, it's often said in Gambia, uh, that's how people get connected. Is this really true? What message do you have for people who have this belief and this notion? Uh, the issue of corruption, mm -hmm. let me first deal with that. Mm -hmm. I think that is absolutely uh, not true for PMO. Uh, because those who work in the public service, they know. PMO is often referred to as the driest uh, sector in the public service. What we deal with at PMO is the poorest sector of society. That's the public servant. Mm -hmm. The civil servant, they don't have money. Mm -hmm. So PMO yeah, but rewarding people, giving I'm people coming, appointments, I'm coming, giving people... I'm coming because in the, in the public service, uh -huh. If you come for promotion mm -hmm. or for appointment, mm -hmm. you don't have money. Mm -hmm. People, those who are coming looking for jobs, they don't even have money for themselves. Yeah, but they want to enter the public service. Mm -hmm. So those are people you deal with. Mm -hmm. And those who are going for training, mm -hmm. you, there's no way you could, you know, milk people out of money out of a uh, civil servant. Because I, I will our it. salaries are mm -hmm. very low. Mm -hmm. So how much money are you going to get from public servants mm -hmm. for, for, for 
to give them promotion or give them recruitment in the public service. It's not there. Uh -huh. I, so, let me so give you what we deal with as PMO is the, is the files. Uh -huh. We have voluminous files that uh -huh. we deal with. Uh -huh. And uh, until recently, most people don't want to work at PMO. I think perhaps because of these reasons. Mm -hmm. Because there is no way we don't have projects. We mm -hmm. don't have, uh, the all we have is funding for, mm -hmm. for training. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. And if you, you can only use that money only for training. Yeah, and that's what and I'm when saying. You pay for, uh -huh. uh, when you pay for tuitions, uh -huh. you pay directly to institutions, not uh -huh. even to the individual. Uh -huh. So what you pay to so the there are no incentives, nothing that goes to the individual that you can have. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. My institution, for example, Gambian Talents, mm -hmm. um, uh, wrote to an institution in the Gambia for sponsorship. And the person who is actually supposed to approve our package told us that he has to get 25% cut from the budget that we've submitted if he's to approve it. I mean, things like that. Is that not possible at no, PMO no, where no, the no, person no, working no. at PMO can actually, I, no. I mean, get incentives no. like that. You help somebody to get a training package and it includes like podiums and few things and the person comes back. I know, I know. That's not possible at PMO. No, no because uh, tra you see, training, you don't pay per year. Okay. In training, you pay stipend. Stipend. Mm -hmm. And the stipend that's paid to the civil servants is very low. Mm -hmm. So imagine sending people to UK mm -hmm. or to the US mm -hmm. or to Ghana mm -hmm. or anywhere mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, with low per diem, mm -hmm. uh, uh, stipend, and mm -hmm. you also want to cut up from that. It's not even possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That one is completely out of the way. You cannot do that. Okay. Okay. Well, it's just the people thinking and believing that, well, oh, I owe it to you because Gambia, we believe in that. Okay, you do them that favor. They want to owe you their life, or you think they owe you your the incentive, their life. The incentive we have at PMO mm -hmm. is uh, uh, kind of a um, promotion. Okay. Because PMO, mm -hmm. that's where promotions are determined. Mm -hmm. So usually, if you enter the public service mm -hmm. with another person the mm -hmm. same year, mm -hmm. and the person works elsewhere, and you mm -hmm. work at PMO, the chances are that you might go a little bit above, above him. Mm -hmm. Even though he might, you know, they probably have more budget where mm -hmm. they travel mm -hmm. and other issues. Mm -hmm. But PMO, you also have that kind of advantage. You mm -hmm. probably can get faster promotion. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. All right. Which That's didn't happen in my own case. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, fair enough. You are watching the First Half yeah. show on the Gambian Talents TV. We, um, my guest is um, His Excellency Mr. Dauda Fazira, Gambia's current ambassador to the United States. And he's worked, I mean, in the civil service and has worked in, um, his way up through the ranks. And of course, and he's just sharing some of those things. Being at PMO and some of the things that we hear in the Gambia about civil service and some of the things that we see, one can easily imagine that it runs across the board. Mr. Fadera is denying that in the case of, I mean, the PMO. He said that the, that doesn't exist at the PMO, and we'll take his word for it. Now, I ask you, as the permanent secretary, what was your responsibility as permanent secretary? If we should just fast forward, um, at PMO? Yes, you were permanent secretary yes, at PMO yes, until yes. your <coughs> appointment as secretary general. So, tell us your responsibility as a permanent secretary. Basically, is to uh, provide leadership mm -hmm. for the public service. Mm -hmm. On behalf of the Secretary General, mm -hmm. we coordinate the activities of the sector. Mm -hmm. We engage them in the public service reform mm -hmm. uh, and also ensure that they have a reasonable capacity mm -hmm. to be able to undertake the, the functions for which they are, they are set up to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we also take part in the implementation mm -hmm. of the uh, regulatory environment. Mm -hmm. uh, individuals in public service, mm -hmm. you have. Uh, issues with your heads of department, mm -hmm. it report them to PMO. Mm -hmm. So PMO uh, does a lot of uh, uh, negotiation mm -hmm. and uh, try to reconcile sectors when there are differences. Mm -hmm. And if necessary, we forward it to public service commission. Mm -hmm. if, needs be, if there is a need for disciplinary measures, they mm -hmm. are taken at the level of public service commission. Mm -hmm. But we do a lot of you know, back channels. Mm -hmm. uh, discussions mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. sectors mm -hmm. and their employees just mm -hmm. to ensure that DEPOM exists mm -hmm. uh, and that people abide by the uh, regulatory environment. So in short, no director can just not like their employee and say, I'm going to terminate your service. It, it doesn't, you know, it cannot happen. It because in happen. the first place, you do not appoint your employees. Okay. All appointments are centralized on the PMO mm -hmm. uh, through public service commission. Mm -hmm. So, Heads of department 
if they have, when they have vacancies, the mm -hmm. only thing they can do is notify us. Mm -hmm. When you notify PMO, mm -hmm. uh, PMO will also send to public service, send to public service commission. Mm -hmm. Public service commission is the mm -hmm. authority that mm -hmm. does the appointment. Okay. So they will give us the okay mm -hmm. for the position to be filled, yes, uh -huh. and uh, ideally we will get the position advertised. Mm -hmm. When it is advertised, mm -hmm. the people apply at PMO and PSC, mm -hmm. and all the files will be put together and forwarded to the director, mm -hmm. the head of department mm -hmm. who has the vacancy, where the vacancy mm -hmm. occurs. Mm -hmm. So the role you do there is mm -hmm. to help do the shortlisting, mm -hmm. do the first shortlisting, okay. and you also don't do that um, using your own discretion. Mm -hmm. You, there is a guideline. Mm -hmm. There is a guideline that you follow mm -hmm. to ensure to, to ensure that those who do not meet the the set set out mm -hmm. uh, requirements mm -hmm. are not shortlisted. Mm -hmm. And when you do shortlist, mm -hmm. you forward the file back mm -hmm. to PMO. Mm -hmm. And PMO well, is, is corruption still not nepotism still not possible because there you when you give it to them? No, because you have to submit both the long list mm -hmm. and the short list. Okay. So, but then if you guys don't know the relationship of the person and the director and they happen to shortlist a family member or their girlfriend or somebody, how will you guys know? Because they, um, apparently maybe they meet the qualification same as the other candidates. So that's it. So if anybody meets the requirement, whether okay. they are relatives or uh -huh. not, they are supposed to be shortlisted. Okay. So shortlisting is one step towards recruitment. Okay. So when they are shortlisted, the, the files now will be forwarded to the Public Service Commission mm -hmm. and all those shortlisted will be Call for to come forward for interview. interview okay. So your performance at the interview now determines. determines. And you as director has no role. In you are not in the interview. You can only observe. That is good to know. Um, it's good to have an expert, to talk to an expert about some of these things because they can break it down. Um, we are here with um, His Excellency Dauda Fadera, the Gambia's ambassador to the United States of America. Mr. Fadera, uh, you, you told us um, uh, your role as a permanent secretary was to advise the secretary general. Are you answerable to the secretary general or are you answerable to the minister? No, uh, the, the PMO is under no ministry. Oh, it's under no ministry. So the secretary general uh, essentially is the minister. Is the for, minister for PMO. Yeah, for PMO. Okay. Uh, and so your PS, okay. PS, PMO reports to the secretary general. Okay. Oh, That's okay. It. Okay. All right. But all other secretary, all other permanent secretary reports report to their their ministers. ministers. Okay. All right. That's clear now. It's good to know. Um, now you started your career as a civil servant during former president Yaya Jame. During third order. Oh, during third order. You said ninety five. No, no, no. You Nin said ninety five. I joined the PMO. Oh, you joined PMO. Right, when I was a teacher and I was also a lecturer at the Gambia College. At Gambia College. Okay. okay. But then and also, okay. and also worked at Ministry of Education. Ministry of Education. Under the okay. of, uh, okay. the Republic. Okay. But then you started like uh, being in the full service yeah, and the service. yes, um, uh, central government. I mean, um, during your agenda's yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, how was that, especially being that your office had to do with his office? Uh, some of these appointments you are talking about, he's been accused of hiring a lot of his family members, putting them in public positions and the like. I mean, uh, were you aware of these appointments? I mean, because these are appointments that were actually questioned. Is it true that he used his powers to actually put his family members in positions that he wanted, especially those top positions? Well, uh, during the First Republic, mm -hmm. one of the hallmarks mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the, the Second Republic, mm -hmm. if I may call it now, mm -hmm. although we don't have a uh, mm -hmm. uh, republic yet, yes. mm -hmm. is that uh, much of the powers mm -hmm. invested in the sectors, mm -hmm. in the public service, mm -hmm. were hijacked mm -hmm. and concentrated on that. Office of the President. Uh -huh. This also includes recruitment. Mm -hmm. So still, uh, PMO and Public Service Commission continue to do a lot of recruitment, mm -hmm. but some of the key positions mm -hmm. were principally decided at the Office of the President. Okay. So uh, the, the, in that, that case, the, the executive director will come mm -hmm. from the President mm -hmm. to Secretary General mm -hmm. to PMO mm -hmm. to Public Service Commission mm -hmm. simply for concurrence mm -hmm. and the appointment to be effective. So those who are appointed are those that would have been identified mm -hmm. by the president. No, Jamal, the new directive. Oh, these yes, days, yes. directives are too common. Exactly, we are everywhere. hearing executive it's directives everywhere. too much. We are hearing too much of the executive everywhere. directives. It's executive directive. We are looking at the people commission, appointed, the general commission. People appointed mm -hmm. through executive directives. Mm -hmm. They were also removed mm -hmm. through executive directives. 
and you guys couldn't do anything. There's you, nothing anybody can do. So I'll just see the drone later on now on a phone call, sometimes okay. verbal. Mm-hmm. Not verbal, no. No. It was all written. It has to be written. No. Anything that comes to the public service mm-hmm. must be recorded. So there was no verbal, I mean, no. I mean appointment or dismissal as you go? No, no, no. no. Maybe to, to the Secretary General, perhaps. Okay. But the Secretary General has to write to, write to PMO. The okay. Secretary General cannot mm-hmm. issue the, mm-hmm. a verbal. G- give, uh, give us a couple of names. Mele Alonko in the what office of the President. Mele Alonko, they were directed. Quite a number. Uh, <laughs> for, uh, give me three. Uh, no, basically, mm-hmm. uh, the most appointments of permanent secretary uh-huh. comes from the office of the president. Permanent secretary, permanent secretary and director, uh-huh. and also uh, chief of uh, security service, service mm-hmm. also comes from the office of the president. And ministers as well. Oh, ministers are not public servants; they are politicians. Oh, politicians. So they don't okay. even come at all as PMO. Oh, ministerial appointments no, don't come no, to PMO. That, that's a level of politics. Okay, that's political public, appointment. PMO simply deals public service deals simply from the permanent secretary. Okay, okay. Yeah. permanent secretary coming down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, we are trying to break down the Gambian civil service and how it works. And of course, this is an expert who was there. Um, did you see any appointment that was sent to you and you knew this wasn't right and your consent wasn't clear, but directives, like you said, you have to do it to save yourself? Uh, yeah. And you could have, in, which, in a case in which you could have acted differently, I mean, or given a different advice, Absolutely. but you just went ahead and went with the flow. Yeah, sure, sure. Be- uh, because um, ordinarily, mm-hmm. uh, recruitment mm-hmm. is done through complicated bidding. Mm-hmm. So when positions are vacant, mm-hmm. they should advertise for mm-hmm. all qualified Gambians mm-hmm. to apply. Mm-hmm. And then the successful candidate mm-hmm. will be recruited. Mm-hmm. And the most responsive candidate mm-hmm. will be recruited by the Public Service Commission. But in the case of executive directives, mm-hmm. There is no such advertisement in the first place. Mm-hmm. So it simply comes to one person mm-hmm. and you ask to ensure that the person is appointed. So sometimes what happens is that um, you don't even have the uh, the profile of mm-hmm. the individual. Wow. So for example, if your name comes, just simply your name mm-hmm. and your address and your telephone number mm-hmm. and you are asked to appoint you mm-hmm. for a particular position. Mm-hmm. And all the positions in the public service there is a scheme of service, mm-hmm. so there are requ- requirements. Mm-hmm. Every position, mm-hmm. you have to satisfy a particular requirement to get there. Yeah, uh-huh. Now, if I don't have your profile, mm-hmm. how do I de- how, how do I determine mm-hmm. that you merit that particular position? Very important. So when you miss such cases, sometimes mm-hmm. that can be very disturbing. Mm-hmm. But very little anybody can do. It has to be done wow. by that time. That is interesting to know. So uh, would you say? Um, then those executive directives from former President Yaya Jame is responsible for the poor performance of the public service to a great extent because a lot of, as you said, the tech or the um, leaders or the technicians in those positions, permanent secretaries, directors, etc., were actually coming directly from the office of the president. If that is the case, those people are supposed to set the pace and be the leaders in those places and make things work and bring about the change. So if those people were not competent enough, would you attribute the failure of the civil service then to those I mean, appointments? Yeah, there are, there are combinations of issues that leads to the, uh, the, the low performance mm-hmm. of public service. Mm-hmm. I would say mm-hmm. uh, the first blow to mm-hmm. public service mm-hmm. was the exodus mm-hmm. of qualitative human capital mm-hmm. from the system. Mm-hmm. Because in those days, mm-hmm. people who were very experienced mm-hmm. and qualified, mm-hmm. but did not agree mm-hmm. with the system, system mm-hmm. were removed, dismissed. Mm-hmm. And those who were not dismissed, mm-hmm. but they were around, mm-hmm. they were not given the opportunity mm-hmm. to exercise their professional judgment, mm-hmm. to do things as it should be. Mm-hmm. So they were constrained, and some of them also left. Because of the mm-hmm. the environment, the work environment. People like you stayed though. Some of us stayed. Some of stayed because not all of us could leave. Only oh, one, I, was taken out, I was taken out to myself. I'm coming to that. <laughs> I was taken out I'm myself. coming to that. I will come to yeah. that. I did yeah. my research yeah. on you. I know. So uh-huh. no, um, mm-hmm. be, so not everybody could go. Mm-hmm. You know, because Gambia belongs to all of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if you stay, mm-hmm. those who stay, mm-hmm. they stay at, the, at, the, at a great risk mm-hmm. 
was quite a number mm -hmm. were taken to prison. Victimized at the end of the day. And, and taken to prison mm -hmm. for virtually doing nothing. Doing nothing. Mm -hmm. you know? So every day mm -hmm. you go to work, you don't know whether you're going to go home. So you are, and we are hearing this a lot from or, or, or civil servants who serve to go to, uh, yeah, we, the hotel. We are hearing a lot from civil servants who serve in the Second Republic. We are hearing this statement a lot that every morning when they wake up, they go into work, they don't know if they will return home. And if they come home, they don't know if they will return back to work the next day. You are making a similar decision. You, you were in the same shoes too? Yeah, bro, everybody. You kind of bid farewell to your I, family I, I, every morning I think, when you leave? I think by See, everybody. You, go, you know, I work in the First Republic. Mm -hmm. And I know how things have been possible. Mm -hmm. You know, those days when you go to people's office, but because senior officer, mm -hmm. you know, they kind of you see family photos. Mm -hmm. You try to mm -hmm. you know personal. set up the office, mm -hmm. you know, personalize in a way mm -hmm. because you are emotionally attached Attack. to the office. Mm -hmm. You show that you're going to work there for quite a number of times. Mm -hmm. You are assured and that, that really that's there always. Mm -hmm. But during this, this last twenty two years, mm -hmm. most people don't even go with a handbag. Wow. To to to, to office. There is nothing in your office. If they ask you to go, you simply walk out through the door. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Wow. So, so in that way, mm -hmm. you, imagine the, your commitment mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. to the programs and mm -hmm. projects of the sector it will not mm -hmm. be quite solid because you know you are in between. Yeah, but was your was your concern clear though? Was your concern clear? Did you sit at any point crap of five years or something? Do I leave? What actions do I take? How do I go about quitting you, you, you or whatever? Know, you know, what's your action? What's you know your the, concern? You know, you know the country belongs to all of us. Mm -hmm. But you and are betraying the country to some extent, no, sir. You, you're not, because... Imagine you are doing things that are in the, against the interest of the public. Just for example, by hiring somebody that is not qualified when you could have recommended against that and you didn't. You followed the directives. Yes. Uh, was your concern clear? No, you, you can't even claim that. Mm -hmm. But what's important mm -hmm. is the greater part of work that you do mm -hmm. is in the best interest of the country. Because, you know, uh, the, the executive appointment mm -hmm. usually affects top mm -hmm. for business matters. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a lot of appointments, promotions, and all the activities that you undertake. Mm -hmm. In the way it should, in the best, in your best judgment, mm -hmm. in the public service. So mm -hmm. you do those mm -hmm. on your own, and you are happy uh, to do the, that. The, the, the you know, you are building mm -hmm. the foundation for today. Mm -hmm. You see, when this thing took place, mm -hmm. you see, if you look at other countries, mm -hmm. if you look at Iraq, mm -hmm. if you look at uh, some other countries after the fall of a long-term dictator, mm -hmm. the public service completely collapsed. Mm -hmm. In the case of Gambia, it didn't have happened that way. Mm -hmm. Not only because the the new government did not pursue that path mm -hmm. policy mm -hmm. of uh, destroying the public service, mm -hmm. but also because there has there is a foundation. Mm -hmm. There are people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, crop public servants mm -hmm. who have been recruited properly mm -hmm. and who are ex exposed to training mm -hmm. and they are coached mm -hmm. and they know the the principal values mm -hmm. of the public service. And they stayed on. So in so order for those people just didn't really have the conducive environment that, to do their work, now but they, they know they the were, job. They were there. But they know they, they, they know the job. job. They were there. Now mm -hmm. they are there. The ones who are today helping the. the it will let the man to come back right now. Mister Dawda Fadera. So, so, so you are proud to be part of that. Okay. Although you are unhappy that there are other components mm -hmm. that you are doing wrong, doing, mm -hmm. you know, under executive directive. But a lot of your critics keep insisting that you had a choice to leave. You did, did you really have a choice? You know... Or was it that, as some will argue know, that you guys were just selfish? I'll call it interested in debate. I'll let you talk about what that's where you are getting paid and that you cannot leave. If you leave, of course, you are already established. You have your job, you have your car, you have your family. If you leave, where will you go? You cannot leave your family. Yeah, this is start that's from, that's from, from, that's from scratch. That's how some people mm -hmm. have seen it. That some of you were just selfish and just following your interest to the detriment of the country because some of those key positions were being utilized by former president Yajeme to actually um, uh, 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 um, uh, do the things that the, um, uh, uh, he wanted them to do for him. For example, write the big checks that we are hearing at the commission now. It was those directors who made those I mean, checks. It was those sec permanent secretaries who signed those checks. I mean, that we are not in the interest, especially in the case of, let's say, for example, social security and all other places, ports and all other places that we are hearing all these, I mean, big things. So if those appointments were done by you or you have a hand in that, 
Don't you think you have betrayed Gambians? Okay, let's let's unpack that. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell you something. In the you watch the commission. Mm -hmm. In the civil service, mm -hmm. there are fundamental procedures mm -hmm. and guidelines mm -hmm. that must be followed mm -hmm. in whatever you do. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, the in the public service, civil service in particular, mm -hmm. there is no discretion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything has to be rooted in either policy mm -hmm. or an act mm -hmm. or a general order. Mm -hmm. It has to be regulated somehow. Mm -hmm. In on paper. So on paper and also and even in, in, terms of, in terms of finances that you're talking about, mm -hmm. you see uh, there's a difference between the civil service mm -hmm. and uh, public enterprises. Okay. We are all on the public service, mm -hmm. but the the code of conduct, mm -hmm. the the rules of engagement mm -hmm. are different. For the uh, public enterprises and the public service. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you work in the civil mm -hmm. service and mm -hmm. where we recruit people from, mm -hmm. you haven't heard mm -hmm. much of mm -hmm. yeah, Yajeme mm -hmm. using the directors mm -hmm. and the permanent services mm -hmm. to access funds from the government money. Mm -hmm. it's going to where, where would you categorize um, social security, for example? That is, is an enterprise. public enterprise. Okay, Ports is a public it's enterprise. A public enterprise. Um, central, with, central bank, central also bank, all of the enterprise. Okay. So they're not necessarily directly on the. Could be bundal. Could be bundal. The whole whole like a kodo namo samana bank. Could be fire. So under under the civil service, mm -hmm. if you want to get money out, mm -hmm. it goes through a very tight channel. It's channel. Okay. And at different levels. Mm -hmm. So everybody will know, and I think Ajame knows about that. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm not Jema back yet. No, <laughs> you haven't heard much about about that, have you? <laughs> yeah, that's true. No. It's good to know. Uh huh. So, well, I mean, fast forward. If we are, I mean, Jema by the Sinyapula, he um, removed you from your duties a couple of times. Uh, what did you do? I just like many other who have been sent out. Mm -hmm. I was not sure exactly what I did. But what I heard was that uh, he 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 was told that I was using my office mm -hmm. to recruit people uh, from the op opposition sympathizers' families. Oh, okay. You know, so how true this is? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But is, is it, can one say that is true now that we see you <laughs> <laughs> appointed as the ambassador for the opposition? No, no. Is, is, can that be true? No, can no. people, what would be a reaction to people no, who will see it uh, that way? You know, for me, um, uh, Mr. Jo, mm -hmm. uh, I see public service mm -hmm. as a, a very important mm -hmm. institution mm -hmm. for the Gambia and for any country. Mm -hmm. And uh, for any country mm -hmm. to transition to development, mm -hmm. You have to have a very strong public service. Mm -hmm. The values of, of public service must be strong, mm -hmm. and you must have the qualified people to run the place. So, to the best so of I my knowledge, you never. So, the best of my knowledge mm -hmm. and ability during my time, mm -hmm. I try as much as I could mm -hmm. to ensure that you know judgments are not colored by parochial considerations mm -hmm. like tribes mm -hmm. or related relations. Mm -hmm. That is what is important. So were you an underground opposition? You were just I, in the I, system, I, but you even you I, feel I, it. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. I, were you APRC? I wasn't in public. I, I hardly vote. Really? At that time. Yes, because I didn't see it even as important to me. Really? Yes. And now you are in the <laughs> political position. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. In those days, it's not easy because, you know, a lot of people don't have faith in the system of voting. Voting, uh -huh. So a lot of people thought that, well, it doesn't work. Okay. I don't think... You know, like Adam Barapat said, mm -hmm. many people thought that this change could not come again through the ballot box. Mm -hmm. But yes. eventually it did. Mm -hmm. So perhaps I was also guilty of that. Mm -hmm. So I was not active in politics. Okay. You know, I don't attend political rallies. Mm -hmm. I don't attend but deep in your heart, who were you sympathizing? Who, who you I wanted to change. You wanted to change? I wanted to change. And, and you voted for Adam? You voted for Adam? Well, 2016. But the important thing is that I wanted to change. Uh -huh. I think every, you know, well meaning Gambian mm -hmm. wanted a change. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to have freedom, mm -hmm. we want to have democracy, mm -hmm. we want respect for human rights, mm -hmm. we don't want people to be mm -hmm. arbitrarily dismissed from their, their So to a great extent and you were not, to a prison. To a great you know extent you are not happy with the system. I think so would you be considered what would you would we be right to say that 
when Yaya was about to leave and all those presidents came, he said, now I know who my friends are. Mm -hmm. When people started showing their true colors and everybody <laughs> chickening out, yeah. uh, would we, he be right to say that, okay, well, you were not one of his true friends, uh, true, one of his true loyals? You well, just, uh? well, because even during his time, mm -hmm. you, you would not see me with uh, any party yeah. apparatus. Uh -huh. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. So I, okay. I, mm -hmm. I'm a very uh, disciplined public servant. Okay. Thank you. Let's go to your civil service. The time is against us. I know you are a very busy man. Civil, you as the head of the civil service, when Adam Barrow came, I mean, did they trust you in the first place to make you the secretary general? You were the first secretary general under the Adam Barrow administration. Um, was there that trust? Did they know whether you were still loyal to Yaya or you were loyal to them? Did you see any sign of this trust <laughs> when you were hired? No, I didn't see that. I, I think because it's a very important position. Mm -hmm. I don't think in the first place you will appoint somebody you don't trust. Mm -hmm. And I know this is a very serious government. Mm -hmm. They did their betting. Mm -hmm. uh, they would have looked at everything mm -hmm. and come to a conclusion that this person is somebody we think we can rely on and work with. Mm -hmm. So I didn't feel it that way. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people had the notion that, okay, some, a lot of the positions hired by President Adam Abaro were politically motivated, I mean, tribally motivated and the like. I mean, if you look through the list from the way people are analyzing it, I mean, a lot of people would think that, okay, well, because Mr. Fadera is a Mandinka or two, maybe because he was underground UDP doing his thing. I mean, all of these things have been said. So what is your reaction? I mean, did you apply like any other Gambian, like you said, and then you were shortlisted? Did you personally apply or were you offered the position? I don't want to go into the details of how uh -huh. that was that had happened, uh -huh. but I can assure you that um, uh, the new government mm -hmm. has spent a lot of time mm -hmm. betting CVs. Quite a number of people submitted CVs, mm -hmm. including mine. Okay, so you submitted your CVs. A lot of okay. CVs were submitted, so okay. they looked at that, and they have their own their betting system, mm -hmm. and they did that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wouldn't agree with you that the appointments were uh, kind of. Politically, uh, tribally, tri tri on, um, motivated. Tri tri no, no mm -hmm. I don't know what list you are looking at. Mm -hmm. But if you look at what we have, mm -hmm. even when I was there myself, mm -hmm. I felt that I was doing something right. Mm -hmm. Because I noticed that sometimes other people come and say, oh, this person is only appointing my Mingo people. Mm -hmm. And then I know also that there are other people who also come to me, you are only appointing the uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. So for me, that's not important. Mm -hmm. Just get the people who can do the job and who have the requisite mm -hmm. profile mm -hmm. for a particular opening. Mm -hmm. Let them be on that. During your one year of being Secretary General, what would you consider an achievement that you have done? Uh, we, you know, it's very difficult. You have to well, accomplish anything? I'm coming. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, we are this government started. Mm -hmm. There has been virtually nothing mm -hmm. in place mm -hmm. because the public service mm -hmm. has been sidelined completely. Mm -hmm. uh, this government came in mm -hmm. wanting to ensure mm -hmm. that rule of law mm -hmm. and freedom, mm -hmm. fundamental freedom, mm -hmm. are put in place. Mm -hmm. And the, the civil servants mm -hmm. and the public generally mm -hmm. also really want to make sure that, you know, their rights are respected. Mm -hmm. So there was kind of euphoria mm -hmm. in the system. Mm -hmm. You know, people kind of, you know, how, to, how do I best describe this? I, I always tell people, you know, Gambia was, like a, Gambia was more like a one big prison. Mm -hmm. And everybody was inside the prison. Mm -hmm. But what have you accomplished? So, suddenly, mm -hmm. I'm coming there, suddenly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you realize that the oxygen mm -hmm. in the prison is is, 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 is running short, <laughs> and then there is a small opening uh -huh. for people to get out. To get out. Okay. Out. So what have you accomplished? So it was a confusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time is that on your side. So that's why I want you to so, get to that. So what you have the, accomplished? The most important thing for me mm -hmm. when I look back mm -hmm. is that our ability mm -hmm. to provide justice, some mm -hmm. justice and reconciliation for public service mm -hmm. was very, very important. And did you accomplish that? We mm -hmm. did that because, mm -hmm. you know, like I told you, uh, quite a number of people have been taken out oh, okay. illegally. Oh, so you were able to bring back so a we good able number? To bring them back. Okay, okay. Some so common work for government, mm -hmm. some were out.
and we are dismissed. That's good. That's good. So, mm -hmm. when you bring such people back to work, mm -hmm. by law, mm -hmm. we are supposed to compensate them for the days mm -hmm. and months and years that they were sitting at home mm -hmm. because they were illegally mm -hmm. dismissed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we have been able to conduct a successful mm -hmm. negotiation with them through mm -hmm. a committee that I set up mm -hmm. and I chaired. Okay. You know, to say, look, mm -hmm. this is time for reconciliation. Mm -hmm. This country belongs to all of us. Mm -hmm. We want you to come back and work. Mm -hmm. But forget about mm -hmm. one. Let's forget about the past. Mm -hmm. So you ask Don't come back and ask for back pay mm -hmm. from years that you are sitting home. And most, you know, the Nordic Gambians, they agree. Okay. They came back. Okay. Go to work, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we have to get work. Nice. So President Barrow did not bypass you during your term as Secretary General. He did not use his powers to bypass you. He allowed you to do your job as you were allowed by law to the best of your knowledge and ability. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, know, you know, President Barrow has said that many times in public mm -hmm. that he trusts the technicians. Yes, I heard right. that. He, he always said that. Mm -hmm. So, and I know he's somebody who listened to the technicians, technicians uh -huh. which I think is also fair, something we haven't had mm -hmm. the opportunity to do before. Mm -hmm. so, I would have asked you a few questions on that, but your protocols are signaling me that time is going. But these are some important questions that um, is, are important for you to answer. I mean, he has said that a lot of times, I mean, uh, and, and, and it is important, we've heard him say it. Now, your appointment as ambassador came a year later. Um, that, of course, is considered as a political appointment. As America is a very important um, country that Gambia deals with, by the way, so to appoint you there it must be something. New. But what would be your reaction to people who will take this appointment as a demotion? You are called the Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service, which means everybody else is under you, we're under you. Now, for you to be taken out of that position and made an ambassador, what would be your reaction to people who will see that as a demotion? No, I, I wouldn't see that as a demotion. Mm -hmm. uh, even you don't compare apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. Civil Secretary General position is the head of the public service. Mm -hmm. We all work on the Secretary General. Mm -hmm. I work on the Secretary General. Mm -hmm. But this is a new environment for me. Mm -hmm. As a person, all my life has been in public and public administration. Mm -hmm. From 1994 mm -hmm. to 2016. Mm -hmm. That's quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So I personally wanted some a change. Mm -hmm. And I, been, this has been my dream for a long time mm -hmm. to serve as a chief diplomat. Take them ambassador to some random country that probably you will be redundant and nobody hears about you. You are bas he basically kills you. So a lot of times people that he has removed so far is always announced that they are gonna be under they are gonna be put under the um, uh, to be made um, to, for so they are put under the foreign service. Um, we've seen that in the case of my party, we've seen that in the case of former Vice President Fatmata Tambajang and a few people that they are going to the um, foreign um, uh, service. Some went and some would not have gone. But in your case, of course, you are removed as Secretary General. I can speak for myself, I won't speak for others, That's but true. I can assure you that uh, uh, Adam Barrow mm -hmm. is very engaging. Mm -hmm. He consults with you. Mm -hmm. He discusses with you. Mm -hmm. He wants to know what you want to do, mm -hmm. how you can help him, mm -hmm. what else do you want to do. Mm -hmm. And in my case, mm -hmm. it has been something that he just said, I want to take you there. Mm -hmm. It's something that we discuss. Yes, and there's something I've discussed before with me, not only with him, but mm -hmm. with so many other mm -hmm. people around. Those who know me know mm -hmm. that I got to a point where this has been my dream. Okay. Right? I want to also serve my country mm -hmm. in a different capacity. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found this job very exciting, mm -hmm. and uh, we are doing what we can mm -hmm. to further the relationship between the Gambia and mm -hmm. the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, some, in, some, in some, the right direction. Some people believe that the new government, of course, of course, him having trust on you, um, just like Yaya, he also sent you to America so that you will be able to secure some funding for him because some of the people are accusing President Barrow of starting to. Um, uh, be caught up. Um, just last week, we heard of the 30 million that were in the first lady's account from China that they say they don't have a clue where it is from. So, because of those things, people are losing trust 
Um, some people are losing trust in the administration and some would say, okay, you are brought to America so that you can help him to secure some funding that you can also divert to his account, his wife's account, and etc. things like that. What would be your reaction to things like, statements like that? No. Anyone who thinks that way doesn't know America. America okay. doesn't exist that way. Mm -hmm. This is a country of laws, mm -hmm. and they have procedures, and it's a very transparent mm -hmm. set of you know about America. Mm -hmm. It's not like mm -hmm. uh, other countries. Mm -hmm. So, and this is not Adam Barrow. Mm -hmm. You know, here, mm -hmm. my duty mm -hmm. is to come here mm -hmm. to do whatever I can mm -hmm. to ensure that we improve the relationship mm -hmm. between the Gambia mm -hmm. and the United States. Mm -hmm. To ensure that we improve the relationship between the people of the America mm -hmm. and the people of the Gambia, mm -hmm. and to look after our Gambian citizens who are here, mm -hmm. to see how we coordinate with them, mm -hmm. to ensure that they mm -hmm. also participate in the national development of the country. Mm -hmm. So that is something that's core mm -hmm. of my concerns here, and that's exactly why I'm here today. Okay, that's great to know. So, what is your role as an ambassador? Uh -huh. What uh, your protocol is uh, signaling me? As, uh, how did you find the embassy when you came? In what condition did you find the Gambian embassy? You know, like that, the Gambian embassy is just like any other secondary service mm -hmm. on the agenda. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult place. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not find, for example, a database of Gambia mm -hmm. in the embassy. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe my predecessors for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I know during the Gambia's time, mm -hmm. if you ask people to come mm -hmm. forward and register with the embassy, Gambia is mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. nobody will come forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just like sectors back home, mm -hmm. where they were weakened mm -hmm. because of mismanagement mm -hmm. and uh, or control of the state house, mm -hmm. the same thing for the embassy here, mm -hmm. you know. But now mm -hmm. we are trying to move mm -hmm. in the right direction. Mm -hmm. We want to build confidence with mm -hmm. the Gambian people, say the embassy exists for them here. Mm -hmm. So we want to for them to understand that mm -hmm. our consular section mm -hmm. is now completely reoriented mm -hmm. to be to serve as the people's base embassy. Mm -hmm. So people who are in need mm -hmm. of council assistance, now mm -hmm. they are going forward to the embassy. Mm -hmm. And we are also going forward to meet them mm -hmm. to find out exactly what the problems are mm -hmm. and then see how we can collaborate with them mm -hmm. to ease some of the difficulties that they face here. Mm -hmm. you know, so we are kind of the conduit between them mm -hmm. and the State Department. Yes, like you said, the relationship between the Gambian embassy and the Gambians in the United States was smeared. Over the years, we've seen a lot of Gambians going to the embassy, demonstrating and doing a good number of, I mean, things. At some point, even taking ownership, the Koit Pass, Ambajaus, Dugas and others, I don't think have been to the embassy since you guys took over almost two years ago. And they were always frequenting the embassy or when the president came here, always demonstrating, holding banners and stuff. I mean, have you encountered anybody? Has any people come there with some uh, vibes of unhappiness mm -hmm. and uh, express concern? Has no. that happened since no. you took over? <coughs> no, because my doors are open okay. for, for Gambia. Okay. And we invite them to come forward at any time. Mm -hmm. We go out to meet them, but we also open the doors for people to come to the embassy mm -hmm. and tell us what the problems are. Mm -hmm. and what they want to discuss mm -hmm. and what they want to see change. Mm -hmm. So we exist here mm -hmm. to just ensure that we know what they want mm -hmm. and then we forward it to mm -hmm. the government. A couple of important and questions. Even, uh, mm -hmm. the individual you mentioned, I think I met him, he came from my office. Coach, okay. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. A couple of questions. We had a good meeting. Uh, yes, about the embassy. Uh, people want uh, want is we, we bring our time. a change. Who wants to one time? Yeah. Okay, so change. Um, you are talking about some people say that the um, ladies at the receptionist are non Gambians and don't even speak any of the local languages. People are concerned about that when they call and they don't speak English. I mean, nobody at the embassy can address it sometimes, especially those people, and they say they are not nice to them. I mean, but they've been there at the embassy for a long time from what we learned. I mean, are there any plans to actually? put them side by side with Gambians who can speak, I mean, the local languages to address the needs of Gambians. And the issue of picking up phone calls, I'll put them all in one question. The issue of picking up phone calls, Gambians want service from the embassy, they can barely get hold of somebody. And of course, immigration services are very important. Some people don't even know what to do. Let's say you want your kids to travel to Gambia, you don't know you're supposed to get them passport, you never had kids. You have one child, you want to send them to Gambia, the next minute you know you need a visa for them. Last minute, you want to take care of that, the embassy is nowhere to be seen or to be able to help you. What efforts are you making to address some of yeah, the challenges? I, I think you are referring to the past, because for now, yes. this is not a problem. You know, for now, you know in the past, people don't take their phones in the embassy. I can understand that, mm -hmm. because, you know, kind of they are accosted by uh -huh. callers, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. and harassed on the telephone. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was the reason. Mm -hmm. But now, 
My mobile number is everywhere as an ambassador, mm -hmm. and all my staff, everybody calls, not only the, the receptionist, mm -hmm. but they call me directly, mm -hmm. and I call them back. Mm -hmm. When I see missed calls on my, my mobile, I call mm -hmm. back. Okay. And the same thing my That's staff are good. doing now, That's very good. I think if you do your mm -hmm. survey with the, with the community, mm -hmm. you will know that maybe what they are saying now mm -hmm. is far into the past. Right. But for now, we don't have that issue. Mm -hmm. Of course, in terms of expansion mm -hmm. of numbers in the embassy, mm -hmm. it's something that we will welcome. Mm -hmm. you know? But it's not easy. Mm -hmm. The Gambia is a developing country, mm -hmm. our economy is small, mm -hmm. and it's very expensive to maintain embassies. embassies. So mm -hmm. we will have a try for now, but mm -hmm. I'm sure in the future when oil comes out mm -hmm. and more money is in the <laughs> revenue, uh -huh. I'm sure we will strengthen the embassy and bring more people to work. So what about the um, uh, issue of having councillors or representatives in different cities that have large contingents of Gambians? I live in different cities. I live in Alaska, uh, Seattle, Atlanta, North Carolina, and I also traveled across the U.S. virtually. And there are some states at least five to ten states that have over thousand Gambians, uh, two thousand or more. I mean, but there is no service, consular service in this place. Everything is centralized in DC or come to the West New York. I don't know if anything even happens in New York besides the um, UN mm -hmm. mission there. Mm -hmm. So, um, Senegal and other countries have consulates and mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. different cities. Is the embassy looking into uh, any of these? Absolutely, we have our plans on that. Is uh, it's almost. Uh, Place like Seattle, now. especially that is so far away. Uh, not only Seattle, mm -hmm. I think we are looking at uh, five states for now. Okay. We are looking at Seattle, mm -hmm. we are looking at um, uh, Atlanta, mm -hmm. we are looking at Minnesota, Good. Good. we are looking at um, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, North Carolina mm -hmm. and New York. New York, okay. And of course, Maryland as well. Mm -hmm. So these five include Texas, if you can. Yeah, yeah but we want to start with these five for okay. now. Mm -hmm. You know, to appoint honorary council, okay, so that um, they will help us, mm -hmm. you know, provide complementary coverage, coverage, mm -hmm. you know, for mm -hmm. our citizens, okay, in, in those countries. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we are almost that those appointments politically motivated. No, uh, they, they, they will not be politically motivated. Ah, the way we intend to do it, mm. I know the way we intend to do it, mm -hmm. we want to work with the Gambian communities themselves. Okay. So we work with them, mm -hmm. you know, to identify suitably qualified candidates. Mm -hmm. You know, we give them the terms of reference mm -hmm. for the position. Mm -hmm. We give them the qualifications that are required for mm -hmm. the position. Mm -hmm. And then we work with them mm -hmm. and then, you know, identify some mm -hmm. names. Mm -hmm. We can get those names mm -hmm. and then appoint the, the most responsive one among them. No. So it will not be... No, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are monitoring and looking at those and that would be something very good that Gambians have been yearning yeah, sure, for and sure. calling for. Very soon I mean, so far, that. your biggest achievement since you took over the embassy and your challenges because time is against us. Yeah. Yeah. What are your biggest achievements? My biggest achievement for now <coughs> is our ability to engage with the Gambians. Okay, which is very good. So this is something I'm very proud of. Mm -hmm. We go everywhere. I've been here today. Mm -hmm. I've been to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I've been to Raleigh. Mm -hmm. I've been to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, not Minnesota. Go away. Madison. Madison, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I've been there. Mm -hmm. And uh, my staff have also gone to other states too mm -hmm. you nice. know, to meet nice. Gambians. Mm -hmm. So we are putting together a program mm -hmm. based on those engagements. Nice. And one of the issues is this appointment of honorary council. Nice. It's also coming out of nice. that, those engagements. Nice. So that is something I am proud of. Mm -hmm. Number one. Mm -hmm. And then number two, mm -hmm. we are now putting together mm -hmm. a database for the first time mm -hmm. for Gambians mm -hmm. across the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, which is very very important. Mm -hmm. So we know who is where, mm -hmm. and we are able we are able to better serve you mm -hmm. based on mm -hmm. you know, yes the, the, knowing the those numbers, numbers and, and you also know who, who we mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you recall um, earlier this year when we first started. Uh, in the last phase mm -hmm. of our administration, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of, I think, 20 or so people have been taken back to the Gambia. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, there are a lot of mm -hmm. noise about that. Mm -hmm. So they have not been visited. Mm -hmm. They have not, nobody know who they are. Mm -hmm. We just bundled them up, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. handcuffed them mm -hmm. and took them to the Gambia. Mm -hmm. It's because we don't know how to get to them. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. now it's not, you're not going to tell them mm -hmm. anymore now. That's mm -hmm. not happening now. Mm -hmm. Because now we are in touch with them and mm -hmm. things have been done properly. Mm -hmm. And we know how to handle mm -hmm. such situations so mm -hmm. that they don't boomerang mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. that kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, embarrassing. So, what are your biggest challenges? Uh, resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's a big issue and I can understand. Mm -hmm. so it's not easy. Resources mm -hmm. is a big challenge. Mm -hmm. We don't have uh, mm -hmm. enough staff. Mm -hmm. Mobility is not easy, you mm -hmm. know, to travel around America is money, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so sometimes we travel without 
you know, like mm-hmm. our own mm-hmm. whatever. So, mm-hmm. but I, it's, it's all part of public service. It's public service. And I don't understand where our development is right now, but mm-hmm. I know everything is being done to ensure that, you know, our budget be augmented mm-hmm. so that we can effectively mm-hmm. start our council. Mm-hmm. As staff. Last question to you before I let you, um, uh, this thing, President Barrow, where were you and the people in the diaspora a lot are not happy with uh, some of his statements with the contribution that they made um, during um, uh, the uh, struggle and the fight to us, our former president Yaya Jemme. So a lot of ha- feeling that President Barrow betrayed them. Uh, you as the ambassador here, um, if he's making such statements and you hear, um, uh, are you advising him towards the way he talks and address in order to, because Bandlanko, he said, when he first came, he said, the people in the diaspora contributed a lot. So now some of them are telling me when he said that a lot of people in the diaspora just wanted position, and because he did not give them position, they get mad. So what is your reaction, and how are you helping him towards addressing those things? That will be my last question mm-hmm. before I let you um, uh, see your final words. I know. You know, uh, my responsibility, mm-hmm. my mandate here mm-hmm. is to, for, for the U.S., mm-hmm. is to ensure that, you know, the Gambian mm-hmm. who live in the U.S., mm-hmm are able to understand mm-hmm. exactly what the plans are for the government. Mm-hmm. So this is why wherever I visited, mm-hmm. I take along with me mm-hmm. the National Development Plan mm-hmm. 2018, 2021. Yeah, mm-hmm. And that is something I discussed extensively mm-hmm. with Gambians mm-hmm. and showed them where they could also come in and participate. Mm-hmm. You know, Gambia belongs to all of us. Mm-hmm. Whether you are in the diaspora, you mm-hmm. are at home. Mm-hmm. Whether you are a president or a minister mm-hmm. or you are a cleaner, mm-hmm. it belongs to all of us. Mm-hmm. And it's important that we all work together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so we need to reconcile our differences. Mm-hmm. You know, there are a lot of mm-hmm. different talks around. You know, mm-hmm. this media mm-hmm. explosion, mm-hmm. this uh, uh, how do you call it online. You don't be surprised if some of the, what you said today is picked and you are headlined tomorrow. I tomorrow you are front page in the. I, I understand. I understand. Mm-hmm. This uh, mm-hmm. the the. Social media mm-hmm. has completely changed the media yeah, landscape. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we can understand. I and mean, then everybody, if you're own journalist, mm-hmm. nobody can say anything, mm-hmm. which is good. I but some of these are things that he said, though. He asked, these are things that he yeah, said. Yeah, he says what he said, but mm-hmm. also say what they said. Mm-hmm. And that's how you move the country forward. <laughs> okay. So, you know, we don't agree <laughs> with everything together. But it's important that I know there are a lot of things that bring us together as Gambians uh-huh. uh-huh. than the one that divides us. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But those statements those, they do happen and they cause commotion here and there, uh-huh. but at the, at, at the end of the day, we are all Gambians. The argument is he's the president and should not be talking in a certain way or saying certain things. I way. understand, and, <laughs> and it's also like uh-huh. all of us, uh-huh. you know, and there are certain ways mad. I should not uh-huh. talk, uh-huh. but sometimes, sometimes I do, uh-huh. but like you too. Uh-huh. So these things happen, uh-huh. but in the end, mm-hmm. the important thing is mm-hmm. we look at the big picture. Mm-hmm. How do we collaborate? Mm-hmm. How do we put aside our differences mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that we all help mm-hmm. develop this country we call home? Mm-hmm. You know? In so one minute, you share your last word with the viewers. Yeah, my, I, I would like to use this opportunity to, to try to reach out mm-hmm. to the Gambians in diaspora, particularly mm-hmm. in the United States, mm-hmm. you know, to see our embassy mm-hmm. as their partners in development. Mm-hmm that we exist here principally because of the Gambians who are here. Mm-hmm. And that we are keen to reach out to you. Mm-hmm. We want to work with you. Mm-hmm. We want you to participate in what we do mm-hmm. so that together we can help our country. Mm-hmm. Because I know mm-hmm. that uh, members of the diaspora mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. they are people with experience. Mm-hmm. They are people with technical know-how. Mm-hmm. And some of them have resources too. Mm-hmm. So. You know, with those com- combinations, mm-hmm. they can also help us to make qualitative change at home. Mm-hmm. So I want people to use positive energy, mm-hmm. you know, to come together mm-hmm. as we go back and see what we can do mm-hmm. to further strengthen mm-hmm. the, the, the transition, mm-hmm. the positive transition that we are all on right now. Mm-hmm. Because some people say a country is headed to the right direction, mm-hmm. others say it's, no, it's headed to the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. Those are, mm-hmm. those are the debates that we can mm-hmm. always have. Mm-hmm. But this is not only talk. Mm-hmm. Let's come together also mm-hmm. and do, mm-hmm. take concrete steps mm-hmm. and measures mm-hmm. as citizens of the Gambia, mm-hmm. so that together mm-hmm. you know we can make you know, lasting change in the country. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, think that's, I think that's important. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Okay.
Uh, well, that's Ambassador um, uh, Dauda Fadera, the Gambia's current ambassador to the United States of America. Uh, you've heard how we engage him. We wish we had a lot more time to ask him some relevant questions, but of course time doesn't permit us. We actually um, appreciate him giving us the opportunity to talk to us out of his busy schedule, talking to us about um, these different things that we um, uh, want to know. Of course, it's, he's here in Seattle, Washington to attend the um, third annual uh, Seattle Gambian Cultural Weekend, which of course is taking place tonight at the Montlake Terrace Community Senior Center, 23000 Lakeview Drive, um, Montlake Terrace, Washington 98043. Um, of course, uh, tonight we'll be having a cultural event where we'll display our cultural Gamb our Gambian cultural attire, have a lot of cultural performance that will be done by Gambians in Seattle. And of course, the event is open to the general public, male, female, adults and kids is gonna be a jam-packed weekend of fun tomorrow night of course is gonna be the Asubi night and of course it will still be a display of cultural attire cultural food and enjoyment so I mean the ambassador will be there to talk to the Gambians and engage the Gambians in Washington uh, we appreciate him coming to the US and him coming to the to Seattle uh, his humility definitely cannot be overemphasized as you guys can see his doors are open and he's had tons of appointments with anybody that wants to talk to him so please um, we appreciate all of you guys that are commenting. It's unfortunate I couldn't read your comments because time is ahead of us. Uh, follow us on the Gambian Talents Facebook page, Gambian Talents Promotion. If you haven't um, liked our page, like it. Follow us on YouTube, Gambian Talents Promotion, and of course on our website, GambianTalents.com. Thank you very much. This was the Fasa Fast Show. Till we come your way next time. Thank you very much, Ambassador Fadi. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. And thank you to the organizers of this event. Thank you to Dr. Diva, our host, mm -hmm. and everybody else. I mean, thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs>